we are going to start to look at thermodynamics of the universe. So when we study the universe, we can't study the whole universe at once. So we take a part of the universe and we study that. The part that we study is called the system. So a system is what we're studying. It could be a beaker, it could be a flame, flow through a reactor. Uh, then everything else, the rest of the universe is the surroundings. So we break the universe into system and surroundings. So what we're studying and what we and everything else. In our system, we have a couple different categories of systems. The strictest one uh, would be an isolated system uh, that has no exchange of matter or energy with the surroundings. And we can't truly make an isolated system because we can't stop the flow of energy. Everything radiates what's called black body radiation. Everything radiates a form of electromagnetic radiation depending on their temperature. So the only time they don't radiate is if they're at zero Kelvin. The universe could be an isolated system, uh, but it might not. It might be connected to parallel universes. So. Um, isolated systems would be everything, uh, whether it's the universe or the multiverse, with there's, when there's nothing outside that we're actually exchanging anything with. What we normally work with are closed systems, like a beaker. Uh, we do not exchange matter with the surroundings, but we're exchanging energy. Heat flows out of the system or into the system. Uh, an open system would be a flow-through reactor, a flame, where we're bringing in matter, we expel matter. Uh, so uh, open systems are more challenging to deal with, but they have uh, good applications at times. So our first law of thermodynamics is that of conservation of energy. Uh, and energy is strictly conserved in isolated systems. So in isolated systems, there is no change of energy ever. Well, we're changing energy in forms, but never in quantity. We're always, you know, to change energy. We take uh, water at a high gravity level, let it flow downhill, and use that um, to power a turbine, to make electricity, to make light and sound and music and stuff like that. So we're converting energy. That's the fun part of life. Uh, but we can never create or destroy energy if we. Lose energy means that we're not in an isolated system. We're in a, um, a system that can exchange energy with something else. Uh, so if we're losing energy, we're losing it to something else. If we're getting energy, we're getting it from something else. Um, and this um, conservation of energy is, is highly believed by um, physicists such that if, they, if we were to find some violation of this in the universe, then we'd say the universe is not an isolated system, that there's a multiverse out there. Now we know that there are some things that happen naturally and some things that will not happen. So uh, if we drop a mug, it'll sh shatter on the floor. But we don't expect that the, uh, we can put those pieces in a box, shake them, and the mug will reform. So some directions are natural directions. Uh, and the natural direction is a, a direction of flow of energy and of entropy. And we're gonna find out that entropy is the prime determinant of what is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. So spontaneous process is a, a natural direction. So we know that if we let the iron set it out in a moist environment, it will rust, turn into iron oxide. That's the spontaneous direction. And these processes can be extremely fast or extremely slow. Um, the non-spontaneous direction doesn't mean that it won't occur, it just won't occur under those conditions. So we either change the conditions to allow them to occur, find the temperature or pressure regime that will change the direction of that spontaneous process, where we add energy in to pump that uphill, pump a system uphill against the natural flow. 
So entropy is the prime determinant of uh, what is spontaneous in this world. And uh, the natural flow is to increase entropy. And uh, we'll uh, get back to that on the next video. Um, that's the second law of thermodynamics. And entropy, we describe it in multiple ways, but entropy is um, increases with the number of possible states of being, uh, which we call microstates. So Boltzmann equation uh, is the entropy equals k log of w. W is our uh, number of microstates. So if we increase the number of possible microstates, we're going to be increasing the entropy of a system. So we're going to look at entropy of systems right now. So we're going to be staying there systems. And next video, we'll look at the entropy of the surroundings, you know, the rest of the universe. So if we increase the number of possible states of being, we're going to be increasing entropy. And that's the natural direction that we like to go. Although right now we're looking at system and overall the spontaneity is based on entropy of the universe the system plus the surroundings so to increase these microstates we have a number of things that will increase the microstates which will increase the entropy of a system so a gas has a lot of space between the molecules so we can move those molecules around those are different microstates different possible states of being, and it won't change the macroscopic properties of pressure and temperature. So we have a, a lot of different microstates that come with gases that retain the macroscopic properties that we're looking at. So gases have much more entropy than liquids or solids. Liquids, the molecules are moving around, so they have different positions. So that's more microstates, more entropy. Solids, the molecules are generally set in location and they're, they're just vibrating. So the vibration is giving us our different microstates, our different entropy, but having the atoms not move, be able to move doesn't give us much entropy. So our liquids have more entropy than our solids, but gases have the most. Then if we're comparing separate components like the table salt and water, um, there's less possible ways of combining them than we're, if we put the salt in the water and we now have salt moving around. So we can move the salt around to create different microstates inside. So solutions will have higher entropy than the separate components of pure compounds. When we increase temperature, the molecules move more. That gives us more spots of being, more places of being. So things with higher temperature will have more entropy than things with lower temperature. And then when we're looking at gases, if we have a large volume, there's more spots to put our molecules, so we have more entropy. So a large volume will be a higher entropy than a small volume. And of course, this is going to be related to pressure when other properties are the same. So this would be because if we increase our volume, we'll end up with a lower pressure. And if we decrease our volume, we'll end up with higher pressure. So if we're looking at pressure with similar moles, then we know that a low pressure will have higher entropy than high pressure. Because low pressure will have more spots to put our uh, gas molecules, so more microstates, more entropy. Uh, more complex molecules. So inside the molecule, we have different ways of moving the atoms. Um, so if we have a small molecule, we have different ways of moving them, smaller number of ways of moving them. With a complex molecule, we have more ways of moving. So the complex molecule has more entropy because we can move the internal components of the molecule more than we can on a simpler or smaller molecule. And if we're looking at the ionic solids, the ones that are held together more strongly 
vibrate less, move less, and have less entropy. Ones that are held together less strongly move a little bit more, have more entropy from that. And when we look at uh, chemical reactions uh, or systems, the systems that have more moles of gas, since gas hold much more entropy than liquids and solids, more moles of gas will mean more entropy than less moles of gas. And if we're just looking at uh, mass itself, mass itself uh, affects entropy. So um, there's entropy even being held in the nucleus of atoms. So a, a bigger nucleus, bigger molecule will hold more entropy than a smaller molecule. So let's apply these concepts of entropy of a system, uh, or what we call positional entropy, into some types of problems that we might see. So um, for the entropy here, we're just looking at relative entropy. So if we're comparing a solid with a liquid, well, the liquid moves around more. So there's more spots and molecules occupy, so more entropy from that. So the liquid has more entropy than the solid. We're comparing a liquid with a gas. Gas moves way more, has lots more empty space between it, more spots to put our molecules. So gas has way more entropy than our liquid does. If we're looking at reactions, so right now we're melting water ice into liquid water. So liquid water will have more motion than our uh, solid does, so it has more entropy than our solid. So this has more entropy than this. We have increased entropy of this system. We're not looking at surroundings yet, this is the system. So this has more entropy. So that means our system here is going to be a positive change. So these are comparing different things. Here we're looking at a reaction. So we're increasing the entropy, the products have more entropy than the reactants, so it's going to be a positive change. And that's based on physical state. On the next one here, we have a calcium carbonate limestone turning into lime plus carbon dioxide gas. So we're creating gas from where there was no gas. Gas is way more entropy than the solid does, so our products have more entropy than our reactants. So again, we're going to have a positive change of entropy for this system. So here we got a mole of nitrogen gas we're comparing. Uh, the temperature is the same to 90 Kelvin, so we have different pressures. Well, the lower pressure were to be this um, temperature in moles here, we're going to need a higher volume. So this is a higher volume, larger volume, than the two atmospheres. So we have high pressure, which would be a small volume, a lower pressure, which would be a higher volume. So the low pressure, higher volume has more entropy than the high pressure, lower volume. We're comparing now nitrogen with hydrogen, both at standard temperature and pressure, so temperature and pressure is the same. So all that we're comparing really is the nitrogen with hydrogen. Nitrogen has higher mass than the hydrogen. That higher mass holds more entropy than the lower mass hydrogen. So the nitrogen beats out the nitrogen in terms of ent entropy contains. Here we have one mole of hydrogen under two sets of conditions. So uh, 100 atmospheres, 100 Kelvin at two atmospheres, but two better versus 100 Celsius at 0.5 atmospheres. So we have two things that are changing. So in terms of temperature, uh, we're in the 100 Celsius is higher. So we can look at the uh, temperature and pressures, two separate things. So we have a higher temperature over here. That means uh, the hydrogen on the right will have more entropy than on the left. The lower pressure, lower pressure means larger volume, and that also means higher entropy. So both of the changes are saying the same thing, that the 
one on the right is going to have more entropy than the one on the left. And we're not going to have it where we have one points one way, the other points the other way, because we're not at this point going to do calculations to figure out what the entropy actually is. So over here, again, we have um, what a temperature and a pressure going on. Um, so, and, and a mass, we have three things that we're looking at here. So a mass is the third one. So we have hydrogen and nitrogen. So based on those two, the nitrogen has a bigger mass. So they will have more entropy than the hydrogen. For temperature, we have 100 Kelvin and we have uh, 273 Kelvin. So we have a higher temperature for the standard temperature and pressure. So a higher temperature means the one on the right is higher than the one on the left. For pressure, we have two atmospheres on the left, one atmosphere on the right. The lower atmosphere, lower pressure on the right also means higher entropy. So they're all in agreement. They're all saying that the one on the right has more entropy than the one on the left. So the next one we have 100 Kelvin both, two atmospheres both. So the only difference is our mass between them. The higher mass has more entropy than the lower mass. So nitrogen beats out our hydrogen. We're comparing methane to ethane. So we're not specifying the temperature and pressure, so we'll say that they are the identical between the two of them. Uh, this has a total of five atoms that can move around. Here we have eight atoms that can move around. This is a more complex molecule, so it's eight atoms. We'll find more spots that they can be in that these five atoms can. So the more complex molecule has a higher entropy. And here are two noble gases, so both single atoms, no additional. Um, bonds to hold energy or move around, but the neon having a higher mass holds more entropy in it. So a higher mass means more entropy uh, than the lower mass. So next we'll look, look on outside of our system and look at uh, how our system is affecting the surroundings and the universe overall. 